والجروب اللي عقده تسمعون كلكم هسه؟ تمام دكتور هسه نسمع كلكم تسمعون هسه ليش ما تشدوا تسمعون ما اعرف والله ما اعرف دكتور تمام هسه؟ تمام تمام اوكي تمام الكل ده يسمع يعني زين so we will continue for the floor of the oral cavity The floor of the oral cavity, as I said, is formed of single muscle, which is called mylohyoid. On each side, the mylohyoid muscle, if you look to this picture, to this slide, the mylohyoid muscle arises. This is the medial surface of the body of the mandible, and this is the inferior surface of it. This is the base of the mandible, the inferior border, and this is the anterior surface. We have removed all the structures from the below the base of the mandible in the anterior aspect of the neck to reach to the inferior surface or floor of the oral cavity. The floor is formed by two mylohyoid muscles. These are the two mylohyoid muscles, one on each side. Each mylohyoid muscle arises from the mylohyoid line. If you remember, on the inner surface of the body of the mandible is the mylohyoid line on each side. And below this is the mylohyoid groove. Here is the mylohyoid groove with the submandibular fossa here and the submandibular fossa. Now the mylohyoid muscle arises from here. The fibers of it from the mylohyoid line pass, pass medially, medially toward the midline and slightly backward. You see the direction of the fibers until they meet with each other in the median line, in a median, in a median raphe. And then the most posterior fibers become attached to the upper border of the body of the hyoid hyoid bone. This is the hyoid hyoid bone. This muscle has nothing to do with the floor of the oral cavity. This is the digastric digastric muscle formed of two two bellies lies inferior to the to the floor of the oral cavity. So this is the mylohyoid muscle on each side, origin of it. From the mylohyoid line on each side, fibers directed downward, backward, and medially to attach to each other with their fellow at the median raphe and become attached post most posterior fibers to the upper border of the body of the hyoid hyoid bone. It has a posterior free border, each mylohyoid muscle behind and above which enters the structure inside the oral, oral cavity. The mylohyoid muscle is supplied by nerve to mylohyoid, which is a branch of inferior alveolar nerve, and artery to mylohyoid, branch of inferior alveolar artery. Before it enters into the mandibular foramen, it gives rise to the nerve. They give rise both the artery and the nerve. They give rise to artery and nerve to mylohyoid, which runs in the mylohyoid groove here, and then spreads to supply the mylohyoid muscle. There's a posterior free border here for the passage of structures. For example, you see this is hyoglossus muscle, is a muscle of tongue, it passes inside the oral, oral cavity. This is the main muscle of the oral, oral floor, forms most of the floor of the oral, oral cavity. Now, the other muscle which shares in the formation of the floor of the oral cavity, looking to this slide, to this Next slide. You see, this is the mandible, the inner surface of the body of the mandible. These are the lower teeth. This is the ramus of the mandible with the, the mandibular mandibular foramen. Here is the inferior alveolar nerve and vessel, inferior alveolar artery. They enter inside this foramen. They give rise to the nerve and the artery to mylohyoid. These paths, they disappear on the inferior surface of the they pass in this mylohyoid groove and then pass from here to the to the inferior surface of the mylohyoid muscle supplying supplying it now here is the superior surface of the mylohyoid this is the floor of the oral cavity we have removed from here the mucous membrane which covers the floor of the oral cavity to see the muscle forming the floor of the oral cavity this is the superior surface of mylohyoid of mylohyoid in each side become attached, as I said, to the upper border of the body of the hyoid bone. Now, the next muscle which shares in the formation of the floor of the oral cavity is the geniohyoid, geniohyoid muscle. If you remember, on the inner surface of the body of mandible, on each side of midline, 
we have two genial tubercles on each side superior or are called mental spines or genial tubercles a superior and an inferior on each side the superior gives rise to a muscle of the tongue we will come to it the inferior one gives rise to this muscle which is the geniohyoid muscle it's like a ribbon like muscle on each side of the midline arising from the inferior mental spine or genial spine and pass backward again to be attached to the inferior aspect of the body of the hyoid hyoid bone it lies above the mylohyoid the mylohyoid muscle so it shares in the formation of the floor of the oral cavity partly and reinforce the mylohyoid muscle these two muscles they form the floor of the oral cavity anything above here are the contents of the oral oral cavity and through this posterior free border of mylohyoid pass structures from the outside oral cavity to inside the oral cavity you see here is the deep portion of the submandibular cerebral glands curving over the mylohyoid to enter inside the oral oral cavity In this slide, we are looking to the side of the floor of the oral cavity. This is the mandible, this is the median raphe, and this is the mylohyoid muscle and the posterior free border of it. And this is the hyoid, hyoid bone. This is the median raphe of the two mylohyoid muscles. So, floor of the oral cavity, it's mobile, but stable floor, formed of mylohyoid muscle. Mylohyoid is a suprahyoid because it lies above the hyoid bone and the muscular sling inferior to the tongue, which is the geniohyoid. In the origin of mylohyoid, it's mylohyoid line, insertion mylohyoid raphine, median line, body of hyoid bone, posterior, has a posterior free border. Nerve supply is by nerve to mylohyoid, branch of inferior alveola. The action of it is a suprahyoid. It elevates the hyoid bone, supports the structures inside the oral cavity, which is mainly the tongue, and elevates it when swallowing, speaking, or protruding, protruding it. Next, you have the genial hyoid muscle, which forms a slip on each side, parallel to posterior belly of the gastric, but it's above, it's inside the oral cavity on the superior surface of the of the mylohyoid muscle arises from inferior mental spine of mandible inserts into anterior aspect of body of hyoid bone above mylohyoid attachment nerve supply this is supplied by hypoglossal but this is not true hypoglossal the geniohyoid is supplied really by branch from first cervical spinal nerve which joins the hypoglossal nerve and then it leaves it when the hypoglossal supplies the tongue then this branch from first cervical spinal nerve leaves it and supplies the geniohyoid muscle action of it it elevates and retracts again hyoid bone it's again a suprahyoid thereby elongating floor of the oral cavity the tongue lies over the floral oral cavity oral floor and the floor is covered by mucosa which is then keratinized Now, looking to the oral, oral cavity, the floor of the oral cavity, it lies over it, and over it lies the tongue, and then the whole tongue with the floor of the oral cavity is covered by mucous membrane. If we look to this slide, the oral cavity is open, is open. Here is the vestibule. You see the frenulum of the upper lip, the frenulum of the lower lip. This is the vestibule. And here is the oral cavity. The tongue is elevated. This is the inferior surface of the tongue. So within the oral cavity lying on the floor, we have the tongue, we have the tongue situated on it and it's covered with mucous membrane also, which is continuous with the mucous membrane of the oral cavity. Again, there is another fold of mucous membrane between the floor and the, and the tongue, inferior surface of the tongue. This is called the frenulum of the tongue and the anterior median, median line. Next, you see on each side of the tongue, of the tongue there is a fold, elevated fold of mucous membrane on each side of midline. This is called the sublingual, sublingual fold, the sublingual fold. The sublingual fold represents the, in the posterior portion is the deep part of submandibular gland and the sublingual cerebral gland, which lies, which lies above, above the floor 
of the oral cavity. Here is the sublingual gland with the deep part of submandibular salivary glands. They lie within the oral cavity. All these are covered with mucous membrane, and the tongue lies, lies here above above the floor of the oral cavity. Of course, we have two sublingual glands, one on each side and submandibular, together with the duct and the, and the nerves which supplies the tongue and the floor of the oral, oral cavity. So on this slide, you see the mucous membrane covering it and the sublingual fold covering the mucous membrane covering the sublingual salivary gland and then the medial end of it there is a conical papilla you can see it on yourself when you revet your tongue through a mirror and this conical conical enlargement or papilla is called sublingual papilla and on the summit of it there is a minute opening which is the opening of the submandibular salivary gland not of the sublingual but of the submandibular salivary gland on the surface of the sublingual fold, you might see two or three minute openings. These are the openings of the sublingual, sublingual salivary gland opening into the <coughs> floor of the oral cavity. Here you see the, the inferior surface of the tongue. You see this is the mucous membrane, the mucous membrane of the tongue with the frenulum of it. In this area, we have removed portion of the mucous membrane. You see the vessels in the inferior surface of the mucous membrane with the nerve on the inferior surface of the tongue, and this is the sublingual salivary gland, the sublingual salivary gland in the floor of the oral cavity. So sublingual fold, which is sublingual salivary duct, the opening of the ducts on it, sublingual papilla, anterior end of the fold, opening of submandibular salivary gland. Then you have frenulum of the tongue, the mucosa of the covering the oral cavity is non-keratinized stratified epithelium continuous with lingual gingiva and mucosa of the of the tongue, as I said. We will continue now. Now, we have said that studied the roof of the oral cavity with the floor of the oral cavity. Now I pass to the contents of the oral cavity. We said that the oral cavity contains the tongue, contains the sublingual salivary gland and portion of the submandibular salivary glands. Now you start with the tongue. Now the tongue, it's a muscular, muscular, mobile, mobile organ covered with mucous membrane, formed of an aponeurosis, covered with muscles attached to it, and then it's covered with mucous membrane, lies over the floor of the oral cavity. This picture is a slide of the superior surface of the, of the tongue. Now the tongue is covered with mucous membrane. The mucous membrane of the tongue is again is just like the oral cavity, which is stratified squamous orthokeratinized keratinized epithelium. Looking to the superior surface of the tongue of the tongue, you will see that the tongue is divided into, into two portions by this V-shaped V-shaped sulcus. And in the apex of this V, there is a deep depression, which is called foramen cecum. Foramen, it means opening, and cecum, it means closed. This is the site of origin of the thyroid gland, it becomes depressed and it's called cecum because at first during development is an open duct, later on it becomes closed and leaves a depression here, we call it foramen cecum. This V-shaped sulcus is called the terminal sulcus. This terminal sulcus divides the tongue into two portions, an anterior and anterior two-thirds, which is called usually the body of the tongue, and the posterior one-third, which is called the root of the tongue, the root of the tongue. Looking to the surface, to the surface of the anterior two-thirds, you will see that it's, there is a groove, straight groove in the median, in the median line. This is the median groove, or it's called median sulcus, indicates the division of the tongue or formation of the tongue of two, two equal, equal halves. This is the anterior two-thirds and the posterior one-third of the tongue. If you look to the surface of the tongue, you see that it's thrown into, 
into irregularities. Into these irregularities, you see these structures and these irregularities. These are created by folding of, of mucosa, of mucosa and form what is called papillae. These papillae, they increase the surface area of contact of the punk. <coughs> These papillae, so they are projections and irregularities on the surface of the mucosa of the of the tongue. They increase the surface area of the contact with the with the tongue. Now, this is a portion of this mucous membrane, a portion of the tongue which has been enlarged and cut to see the surface of the of the tongue. The mucosa of the tongue, you see these irregularities on the surface of the tongue. These we call them papillae. We call them papillae, and there are four types of papillae unnamed according according to the to their shape, according to their shape. These are these are the <coughs> fungiform papillae. These are the fungiform papillae. These, they look like a fungus, methyl mushroom. Fungus, sorry, fungiform, like the fungi, methyl fatriyat. <coughs> they are formed of a circular portion and then grooves on each side of, of them. Next, we have, we have filiform papillae. Filiform, these are thread-like, thread-like projections, narrow projections of mucous membrane. These are filiform. Next, we have the foliate, foliate papillae. Foliate papillae, like a folia. It's not shown here. And the fourth part, fourth type, is the circumvallate, circumvallate papillae. These are formed of a circular portion and surrounded surrounded by by a ring you see here this is the ring surrounded with a circular portion and the deep fold fold between the circular part of it and the surroundings called circumvallate papilla like a, a fungus inside fungiform and then surrounded surrounded by a circle with a deep groove between between them now in these deep grooves of the increase the surface area of contact and usually they contain, these grooves contain the mucosa, special sensory organs, these whitish ones, we call them test buds. <coughs> Sorry. We call these test buds, they are responsible for sense of test. And this is, this is a section of this enlarged section of a test bud. You see, this is a sensory organ. And it has a small pore opening into the, these these grooves inside the over the mucosa of the of the tongue. And for any substance to be tested, it should dissolve in the secretions of the mucus and saliva secretions. So and should pass through these test pores so that it can be can be tested. You will study the histology of these test test buds. So, the circumvallate papillae are present only on the interior to the V-shaped V-shaped sulcus. Here are the circumvallate valid papillae, the foliate papillae that are present on the lateral sides of the tongue, the filiform on the superior surface, and the fungiform are present also on the superior surface of the anterior two thirds of the tongue. But the circumvallate are confined confined to the anterior to the V-shaped sulcus. Now the posterior one-third of the, of the tongue, again, is thrown into irregularities. These are due to the presence of aggregations of lympho lymphocytes and lymphoid tissue below the mucosa. These lymphoid tissues, we call them lingual, lingual tonsils. Lingual, it means tongue, and they are over the, over the, the tongue. This is the lingual tonsil present on the on the posterior third of the tongue in the submucosa, creating these irregular elevations in the posterior one third of the tongue. We call them lingual lingual tonsil. 
If you remember from the soft palate, we said that the soft palate contained two muscles. They sent one to the tongue, which is the palatoglossal glossus muscle, covered with mucous membrane, become attached to the tongue. And palatopharynges, here the cut edge of it, these two, they enclose between them the palatine tonsil or tonsillar fossa containing this palatine tonsil. On each side and on the posterior one third of the tongue, we have these lingual tonsil, which make the guard for the entry into the oropharynx from the tongue. <coughs> this is for the superficial aspect of the tongue. Now, the tongue, as I said, is a mobile muscular organ. Because it's mobile, it can be the shape of it can be changed. Assume variety of shapes and position. You can protrude it to the outside, bring it inside, bringing it toward the roof of the oral cavity to the side, so it's freely mobile within the oral cavity and even can be protruded to the outside of the oral cavity. Lies partly in oral cavity. The posterior portion of it, it pushes into the pharynx, and that rest it fills the oral cavity proper. Functions of the tongue, mastication of the food, and tests, since we have seen that contains test buds and also aids in deglutition and oral cleaning, but mainly it forms words during speaking also and squeezes food into the pharynx in the beginning of the process of deglutition. The parts of it, as I said, posterior one third is called the root, because this is relatively fixed. The body anterior two thirds is more mobile. The apex of it is the pointed anterior part of body, it's mostly mobile portion. The dorsum of it, the posterior superior surface, includes sulcus terminalis, foramen cecum, lingual papillae, inferior surface. We have studied it with the floor, the sublingual surface containing the lingual frenulum, and we have seen the vessels just below it. The dorsum of the tongue divided by sulcus terminalis in two anterior two thirds. Pre-sulcus lies in oral cavity proper. Posterior post sulcus lies in the beginning of oropharynx, called sometimes pharyngeal part. Mucous membrane is rough because of presence of lingual papillae. Valiate papillae large, they are flat tops, lie directly anterior to the terminal sulcus, surrounded by deep furrows, and the walls contain test spots and opening of glands. Foliate papillae, small lateral folds of mucosa, poorly developed in the human being. Filiform, they are long. Thread-like numerous contains afferent nerve endings sensitive to touch. Scaly thread-like, pinkish-gray line parallel to terminal sulcus. Fungiform papillae, mushroom-like, pink or red spots, most numerous at the apex and sides of the tongue. Test buds present in valiate, foliate, and most of fungiform papillae, and some separately in the epithelium. Posterior wall of oropharynx and also are present in the anterior surface of the epiglottis. Mucous membrane is thin and is closely attached to underlying muscles. Midline sulcus divide the tongue into right and left sides. Lingual septum deep to midline groove. A fibrous septum divides tongue into right and left halves. Posterior part of the tongue. The posterior one third of the tongue, as I said, this is the posterior one third containing these lingual tonsils. In addition, the posterior one third of the tongue is attached to the anterior surface of the epiglottis, which is this one. In addition to attachment to the soft palate by the palatoglossus muscle, is attached to the epiglottis by three folds of mucous membrane. These three folds, two of them are lateral and one in the median line. We call them glossoepiglottic fold. Glosso, it means tongue, and epiglottis is the cartilage of the larynx. These are three, as I said, the median is median glossoepiglottic fold. The two lateral are lateral glossoepiglottic folds. Between these folds lies two depressions. We call them velliculi. A velliculi, or two of, we call them velliculi. These are on the 
possible through these three folds, so the, the tongue is attached to the epiglottis, and through the palatoglossal arch is attached to the soft, soft palate, and it's attached to the superior surface of milo, milo hyoid. And you will see later on that is attached also to the mandible and to the hyoid bone. Now, the rest of the muscle, the rest of the tongue below the mucous membrane is formed of a septum, which is the, divides the tongue into two halves, and the two halves, a median septum formed of dense irregular fibrous tissue, and on each side, on each side, the tongue is formed of muscles, all is formed of, of muscles. Have you seen the tongue of the animals, or you add the, the Tongue, the tongue is formed of ordinary skeletal, skeletal muscles. The muscles of the tongue are of two, two groups. Some of them which come from the outside and become attached to the tongue, insert on inside the, the tongue. And some are confined to the tongue. They are within the, the tongue. They doesn't come from the outside. Those which come from the outside, we call them extrinsic muscles. Extrinsic means from the outside. And those which are confined to the tongue, we call them intrinsic muscle. Each half of the tongue has four extrinsic muscles and four intrinsic muscles. Four extrinsic and four intrinsic muscles. Now, the four extrinsic muscles, they arise from the outside and pass to be inserted inside inside the tongue. These are the hyoglossus, genioglossus, <coughs> styloglossus, styloglossus, and palatoglossus. Now, the palatoglossus, we have seen it as a muscle of the soft palate originally, but it descends from the palatine aponeurosis and become attached to the posterior surface, blends away to the posterior one third of the tongue. This is the palatoglossus muscle. It's considered as a muscle of soft palate, but and a muscle of the tongue. And this is supplied with the muscles of the soft palate by Vigo accessory complex. Next, we have the hyoglossus muscle. From its name, hyoglossus, this arises from the hyoid bone. It arises from the greater horn on, on part of the body of the hyoid, hyoid bone. It's more or less rectangular in shape, arising from the hyoid bone, and pass, pass deep to the, behind the posterior border of the floor of the oral cavity. In this slide, you have removed the portion of the mandible and the half of the mandible and the floor of the oral cavity, which is cut here. This is on one side, the cut edge of the, of the floor of the oral cavity. Here you see the mylohyoid, and this is the genohyoid muscle, the genohyoid muscle. The rest are all within there. So the mylohyoid comes on this side, on this side, now, the hyoglossus, as I said, is rectangular in shape, arises from the greater horn and lateral aspect of the body of hyoid bone, ascend upward to be attached to the lower part of the posterior one-third of the tongue. Next, we have the styloglossus muscle. The third one is styloglossus, which is this one. The styloglossus muscle arises from the anterior aspect of styloid process, of the base of the skull, and descend downward to fade away on the surface of the hyoglossus muscle and the lateral part of the posterior one third of the tongue. So it pulls the posterior portion. And finally, we have another muscle arising from the superior genial, genial tubercle of the mandible above the, hyo, the geniohyoid muscle. This is the hyoglossus, the hyoglossus muscle sorry, the genioglossus muscle. The genioglossus arises from the upper genial tubercle of the mandible and spreads away on the inferior aspect of the anterior one-third of the tongue on its inferior surface. Contraction of this muscle leads to protrusion of the tongue. It's the only muscle which pulls the tongue forward, which pulls the tongue forward. <coughs> 
the style of glosses, it elevates the tongue, the tongue elevates the tongue on each side, the higher glosses depresses the posterior one third of the tongue during process of deglutition, and the palatoglossus it depresses the the soft palate, the soft palate on, on breathing and elevates elevates the tongue during during the degradation. If it pulls the tongue, then it elevates the posterior one third to add the soft palate. These are the four muscles on each side. So we have the palatoglossus, which is a muscle of soft palate originally. Then you have the hyoglossus, the styloglossus, and the genioglossus. Muscle. The genioglossus is the only one which pulls the tongue forward. All other muscles push the tongue to the outside. This is for the extrinsic muscles of the tongue. Now you pass to the intrinsic muscles of the tongue, which are confined to the, to the tongue. And this is a section of the tongue. Here is the mucous membrane of the tongue. And this is the mandible, the body of the mandible. Here is the mylohyoid muscle, the floor of the oral cavity. And this is the tongue, a section of half of the tongue. This is the mucous membrane, which passes over the floor of the oral cavity. This is the sublingual, sublingual salivary gland. This is the section of the, of the tongue. And this is the median septum of the, of the tongue. So on each side, the tongue contains intrinsic muscles, which cause confined to the tongue itself. Now these are again four in number. Four in number. We have superior longitudinal. You see this is the cut ends in this vertical section of the tongue. Of the tongue, you see this is the cut ends of the superior longitudinal muscles. They run from the anterior end of the tongue to the posterior end of the tongue in the upper part below the mucous membrane. Next, below and then fear aspect, we have also the inferior longitudinal muscles. Here is the inferior longitudinal muscles. The cut end, they look like these because the cut, they are run from the anterior to the posterior end again. These two superior and inferior longitudinal muscles, their contraction decreases the length of the tongue and makes it, makes it wider. Next, we have vertical muscles. The vertical muscles, these are the vertical muscles in section they appear totally starting from the superior surface to the inferior surface of the tongue, vertically, the vertical muscles. Contraction of these muscles again makes the tongue makes the tongue thinner and, and more, more flattened. Next, we have transverse muscles. These are the transverse, they intermingle with those of the vertical. These are the transverse running transversely. These are the transverse muscle contraction of transverse muscle elongates the tongue and makes it makes it thicker, thicker and long longer. So we have four intrinsic muscles again in each half of the tongue. So the total number is 16, 16 muscles of the tongue. The intrinsic are superior and inferior longitudinal, vertical and and transverse muscles. The extrinsic muscles are the Genioglossus, hyoglossus, styloglossus, and palatoglossus muscle. Genioglossus arise from superior mental spine, attached to the dorsum of the tongue and body of hyoid bone. It depresses the tongue, pulls the tongue anteriorly for protrusion, the only one which pulls the tongue in forward. Hyoglossus, body and greater horn of hyoid bone, pass to the side and inferior aspect of the tongue, it depresses and retracts the tongue backwards. Styloglossus, from styloid process and styloid ligament, to the side and inferior aspect of the tongue, retracts the tongue and draws it up to create a trough for swallowing. On each side, it draws upward so it becomes concave, the superior surface of it. Palatoglossus, from palatine upon neurosis, as I say, this Muscle of soft palate to the side of the tongue elevates the posterior part of the tongue. The intrinsic muscles, they are four. Again, superior longitudinal, submucous fibrous layer, and fibrous median septum pass to the margins of the tongue and mucous membrane. They curve tip and side of the tongue superiorly and shortens the tongue. When it become, becomes short, inferior longitudinal, root of the tongue and body of hyoid to the apex of the tongue, again, curves the tip the tongue inferiorly and shortens it just like the superior longitudinal. 
the transverse from the medium fibrous septum, fibrous tissue at the margins of the tongue, the inner and elongates the tongue. Vertical, superior both surface of borders of the tongue, to inferior surface of borders of the tongue, flattens and broadens the tongue. Now we pass to the nerve supply of the tongue. The nerve supply of the tongue, we have seen that the tongue is formed of muscles, so it needs motor supply, covered with mucous membrane, needs sensory supply for touch, pain, and temperature, pain and temperature, and needs needs special sensory supply for the test parts, which we have seen present in the in the mucosa. In addition, for the glands, mucus secreting glands in the mucosa with salivary glands, they need autonomic autonomic supply now the motor supply all the muscles of the tongue both extrinsic and intrinsic muscles are supplied by hypoglossal nerve which is the sole motor supply of the tongue except the palatoglossus which is originally a muscle of soft palate is supplied by vago accessory complex now we come to the general sensations that's for pain touch and the sensory supply we have general sensory for the anterior two thirds is from the lingual nerve of of the mandibular mandibular nerve because of the anterior two thirds. The posterior one third is supplied by ninth cranial nerve, which is the glossopharyngeal nerve. Anterior to the epiglottis is supplied by a branch of fair of vagus, which is the internal laryngeal nerve. This is for the sensory supply. Now the test supply, the test supply of it, the test butts of the anterior two thirds are supplied by corda tympani from facial nerve. The posterior one third test butts sensory are supplied again by the same nerve, which is glossopharyngeal. So glossopharyngeal supplies posterior one third, both sensory and test butts, but the anterior two thirds sensory bilingual nerve. Test butts by corda tympani, which is a branch of facial, but joins the lingual nerve and supplies it. The glands, the glands parasympathetic supply is from submandibular parasympathetic ganglia, which accompanies again the lingual nerve and the sense secretor motor for to the to the glands. Test sensations, as I said, on the anterior two thirds. Except valid papillaries, they are supplied by corda tympani, which is a branch of facial nerve accompanying lingual, posterior one third with valid by glossopharyngeal nerve, area anterior to epiglottis by internal laryngeal nerve from vagus. Test sensations are detected on the tongue, on the tongue is sweetness, you can feel sweetness at the apex or tip of the tongue, and saltiness is felt as the lateral lateral margins. The soreness at the posterior part will mur the bitterness again it's as the posterior posterior part in filfil hard you can test it only on the lateral and posterior part and the salty things you can test them on the lateral margins with the sweet is felt at the apex of the thumb.